Etihad First Class Apartments. Along with Emirates First Class, they represent the absolute pinnacle of luxury travel. When first introduced in 2014, people lost their collective minds seeing a large fully enclosed suite, separate bed, and onboard shower. A simple Google search will yield nothing but effusive praise about the innovations. It was truly groundbreaking. It broke new ground! <laughs> <laughs> but Etihad is an airline in crisis. They heavily invested in Air Berlin, Jet Airways, and Alitalia. They've lost well over $5 billion since 2016. Their response is to create a new low-cost airline and make drastic cuts across the board. Nothing to see here, please! So much has changed that, frankly, most reviews may not even be relevant at this point. And while Etihad will give out free tickets to gin up their brand to influencers, what is it really like to fly Etihad Apartments in 2020? Is it worth your airline miles or heaven help us your money? Let's find out. And if you know anything about this channel, you know I won't be pulling any punches. Let's start with what you won't be getting. Chauffeur service? That's not only been cut on all award tickets, but was also recently cut on paid fares outside of the UAE. Style and shave in Abu Dhabi? Nope, that was shut down in 2018. The four-page menu in the lounge at Abu Dhabi? Cut down to barely one. Champagne? Downgraded. Amenities stocked in the vanity? All gone. There's a rampant reports of surly crews and running out of food completely on longer flights. So I arrived for this flight incredibly excited, but careful to temper my expectations. I paid 62,500 American Airlines miles for first class from Malé to Paris, which is one of two Etihad Award sweet spots that hasn't been nerfed yet. The other is Seoul to Abu Dhabi for only 50,000 miles. You could use Etihad's Odin program, but the mileage costs are significantly higher. I had arrived in Abu Dhabi on a connecting flight from the Maldives at 1am. Unlike Qatar, Etihad does not have bedrooms available for first class passengers so I crashed for a few hours at an airport hotel. Three hours before my flight, I walked over to the airport. There's a dedicated first class check-in area, and I passed the chauffeurs dropping off first and business class passengers. As a reminder, this is only included on paid tickets in the UAE. After a separate security and passport area for premium passengers, I found myself at the entrance to the first class lounge. I was warmly greeted by multiple lounge attendants and asked if I wanted to schedule a spa appointment. First class passengers are entitled to a 15 minute complimentary massage, which is great, don't get me wrong, and the head and neck massage I received from a Korean gentleman was wonderful. But if we're comparing airlines, Thai has a 30 minute massage for business class and one hour for first class passengers. I'm not going to give a full tour of the lounge, but there's a large dining area, play area, gym, cigar room, and relaxation area that makes no sense to me. The Wi-Fi in the lounge was blazing fast, and the bathrooms were spotless and kept by an attendant. It was a bit early to hit the booze, so I had some fresh squeezed orange juice and tea. The tea was good, but having just transited in Sri Lanka, I was spoiled. As I watched the sunrise, I ordered a dosa. It was a little on the thicker side, but the filling was quite spicy and it was very delicious. I watched the status of my flight and got up to leave the lounge. But the Coptic attendant implored me to stay, saying that I would be much more comfortable here, and went ahead and poured me some more tea. How can I say no? Finally, I went to my gate just as boarding had started. I could hardly contain my excitement as I boarded. I was personally escorted to my seat by the first class cabin manager and asked if champagne would make my day better. I gave in to the pressure. It was served with dates, a cool towel, and a code for 90 megabytes of free Wi-Fi. Everything you could ever want. Later, I was also served Arabic coffee. Let me speak briefly about the crew. It was truly an international flight. The captain was French. The first class cabin manager, Pratish, was Bengali. My main flight attendant was named Natasha and from Eastern Europe. The chef was Italian. To a person, they were all absolutely wonderful. 
but you won't see any of them in this video. Etihad has a very strict no filming policy when it comes to crew. If you ever see crew in a video about Etihad, you know something was arranged beforehand. Or you could cry about the policy and still get millions of views. Natasha returned with pajamas. She was unsure on the size and gave me a size 2. It was on the large side, but quite comfortable. There were also some fairly forgettable slippers and the same amenity kit I had received the night before, featuring Aqua di Parma products. Honestly, it's pretty bare bones, and there isn't even a comb. Not like anyone's going to be taking a shower or anything. Pratish returned to give me a personalized tour of the entire apartment. He boasted that the leather used on the seat was the same used in Ferraris. After the tour, the cabin manager for the whole aircraft introduced herself and shook my hand. Then the chef asked me about my meal and shower preferences. There's way too many people to keep track of at this point. The entire first class cabin was full, other than the residents, more on that later, and we pushed back on time. Etihad has a traveler's prayer before takeoff, which is not something I'm used to. I don't speak Arabic, but I believe the English translation is Glory to him who has subjected this plane to our control, for we could never have accomplished this by ourselves. Etihad also has ads in the safety video, which is pretty tacky. I find it so exciting to watch an A380 take off, as the big bird struggles to become airborne. <laughs> Flying time is exactly 7 hours at 40,000 feet. Being short on sleep, I wanted to nap as soon as possible. But let's take a seat tour first. It's really over-engineered, and I'm sure I'm missing something. There's four rows of first class, with the even rows facing forwards. I was in 4K, the last row on the right. The doors to the apartment aren't motorized, but can be unlocked by the push of a button. Right at the entrance is a coat closet. Next is the vanity, which while huge, is completely empty. There's a small drawer for personal items, and a mini bar that, like on Emirates, is completely pointless. Primary storage is under the ottoman slash bed, but it's a little tight and I had to take some things out of my overstuffed backpack to make it all fit. The tray is on your right. The primary seat controls are on the left, with both physical buttons as well as a touchscreen. You can adjust everything, lights, the do not disturb sign, lower the window blinds, firmness of the seat, massage functions, etc. The seat doesn't recline that much, as you have a dedicated bed for that. You can bring the ottoman closer to you if you want a footrest. Near the touch remote, there's USB power and HDMI for some reason. The TV is a gigantic 24 inches, but very reflective. Given how this alter ego of mine does not wish to reveal my true identity, that makes filming it difficult. Natasha came to make the bed, and I changed into my pajamas. The bed is formed by lowering the ottoman and adding a mattress top on it. Once in bed, there's even more storage with the noise-canceling headphones, as well as another touch remote. The TV also swivels out and tilts down so you can comfortably watch TV in bed. Sadly, I'm not a big fan of Etihad's bedding. The pillows aren't particularly soft, the bed rather hard, and the blanket nearly alright. Nevertheless, I slept for two hours and awoke over the Turkish border. After my nap, it was time for a shower. After a quick prep, Natasha walked me through how it works. You get five minutes of water that you can control with the push of an on-off button. There's a color-coded bar that counts down how much you have left, and a knob that controls temperature. The door must be closed for the water to run, and it's a bit slippery in there. Shampoo, conditioner, and body wash were all from the same Aqua di Parma company. I must say that taking a shower on board was glorious. It surpassed all my expectations. If you ever can, do it. But sadly, I didn't get to enjoy it that much. Naked and wet with conditioner in my hair, the fasten seatbelt sign came back on. I'd only used about two minutes of water when I rushed back to my seat. Then it was time to eat, and I placed my order with the chef. 
Service was quite slow, and there was a noticeable pause between when I ordered and when the table was made. I started with Russian Caviar Course, which is actually a recent positive addition made by Etihad, which was served with a glass of Ruski Standard Platinum. I'm honestly not much of a caviar person, and I'm sure folks in the comments will tell me I'm doing it all wrong, but I really don't care. It was good. As I was still nursing my vodka, Pratesh returned with a bottle of peach bellini from Venice and insisted that I have a glass. And yeah, it was really great. The next course was a pumpkin soup. It was very well seasoned and had a mellow flavor. Though I must say the pumpkin soup I just had in Turkish in business class was better. Still, the bowl speaks for itself. As we crossed into Romania, I was given a palate cleansing sorbet and was poured a glass of 2013 Australian Chardonnay. There was a significant wait for the next course. Rather than ordering from the main list of entrees or from the breakfast menu, I ordered my main from the bar menu, a steak sandwich. The chef had asked me how I wanted the steak cooked, and I had said medium rare. I was a little skeptical, as the night before I had also ordered a steak on Etihad, and it was cooked to hell. Cooked to f the sandwich smelled fantastic and was really tasty. Was it really medium rare? Eh, looks closer to medium to me, but I'm still not complaining. It was an excellent sandwich. I was so full at this point that I begged the crew for mercy before dessert. I digested for about 30 minutes, and they asked that I ring my call button when I was ready to continue. How responsive were they? From pressing the button to when Natasha knocked on my door was six seconds. I timed it. That's nuts. For dessert, I had a yogurt and white chocolate tart. It was good and not that sweet with a mild flavor. I rounded things out with some Earl Grey tea. The entertainment on Etihad is sadly pretty bare bones with only a limited selection. The noise cancelling headphones were good at least and were available for the whole flight. I went to go use my 90 megabytes of free Wi-Fi. With 9 down and 1 up, it was usable but nothing blazing fast. I almost forgot to mention that there's a lounge area between the first and business classes. Alcohol is on display and you can sit at this little table and order food. Although nobody did and I think it's a complete waste of space, sadly. As the flight drew to a close, Pratesh came by and said he had something special to show me. He knew I was into aviation and that this was my very first trip with Etihad. He showed me the residence, which was empty. I was so excited, but he said I wasn't allowed to film it. It's a combination of the first apartment on the left side of the plane with a personal shower with unlimited water and separate bedroom with a double bed. There's also a dedicated personal butler. I tried to look impressed as he described all the personalized attention and service, but honestly, I was underwhelmed. The reason is that the apartment is so over the top on its own, I'm not sure what more I'd want. Personalized butler? The existing service was already at six seconds. I had not had to wait at all for my shower. And yes, a slightly larger bed in a dedicated bedroom is nice, I guess, but ultimately unnecessary. Honestly, what you're paying for in the residence is complete privacy, as you can board the aircraft first and literally never leave for any reason. He said it was especially popular with Bollywood stars, but most of the time it's empty and just takes up weight and space, and there's a reason why Etihad is considering removing it. After a farewell handshake from the head cabin manager, the flight sadly had to end as we flew over Paris. Le Bourget Airport and touched down at Paris Charles de Gaulle. Seriously? Yes, I want to fill out a survey right frickin' now! After personal farewells from everyone on board, I gathered my things and headed off the plane. First and business class passengers had access to priority immigration, but it's all on the honor system and there are no physical cards. 
my bag was one of the first off the flight. And then I embarked on the epic quest of leaving my least favorite airport in the world with all the trains and metros on strike. But that story will be for another video. So, Etihad First Class Apartments on the A380. Do I recommend it? Yes. And also no. Let me explain. This was my first real First Class Award Redemption. And yes, it definitely is my favorite flight I've ever taken. If you can experience it, go for it. It's totally worth it. But there's a reason why I waited so long into my Miles and Points career to try it. Many airlines have already or are in the process of phasing out first class. Heck, there's even a rumor Etihad will. And airlines like Qatar and Turkish are pushing hard to make business class so good that first class simply becomes unnecessary. What do you get with first class over business? Privacy? More and more airlines are offering doors or suites in business class. Dine on demand? Yep, now that's also a thing in business class. A lie flat bed? Yes, perhaps it's bigger, but business class is good enough on that front as well. It really then just comes down to the service and personal attention. It was excellent, and I was spoiled and pampered like nothing else. But it was almost too much, and airlines like a and and Thai rock service in business class as well. Service is also something inherently variable. Etihad's motto is choose well, and I feel like I did on this flight. You have chosen wise. But as the airline struggles, I don't think we can ignore the numerous negative complaints about the service on some flights. You chose poorly. Unfortunately, there really isn't a good way of booking Emirates first class on miles without thousands in fees anymore, so I won't be comparing them anytime soon. But I think we all know how this is going to end. The pissing contest between Dubai and Abu Dhabi has gone on long enough. And at some point, a merger is all but inevitable. It just depends how much more money Etihad and their backers are willing to keep setting on fire. So fly it while you can, because who knows how much longer it will be available. Thanks for watching, I know this was a really long one. If you like this video, hit that button and subscribe for many more flight reviews to come. I'll see you on the next one.